Hello and behind me is an XRFF Dassault Mirage 3O with O parts standing for Australia. This was the first Australian jet to do double the speed of sound and it was the replacement for the Avon Sabre which you can see down there. This jet had a delta wing which is new and unique and was great at high speed but had a lot of problems at low speed leading to quite a few crashes. But anyway, let's get into the tour. In the late 1950s, the RAAF began a search for the replacement of the Avon Sabre that you can see in front of you. The Lockheed F-104 Starfighter was considered but was too expensive and complex and the English Electric Lightning was too thirsty. So they rather controversially at the time made a decision to get the French Dassault Mirage 3. The first few were built in France and shipped over and used to build the rest of the 3Os under license in Victoria with many locally built components. The striking shape was a major departure from the Sabre and allowed it to achieve a top speed of Mark 2.1, making it the first European fighter to double the speed of sound during level flight. At the end of this long stick is the pitot tube measuring the airspeed and behind that was the ray dome and radar system. You'll notice that the air intake has been lifted a few centimetres away from the side of the aircraft. This was because the air is always turbulent running along the metal surface, so this stops that rough air entering the jet inlet. You'll also notice the cone here which works to slow incoming supersonic air by creating a shockwave essentially crossing the inlet. The entering air then crosses through the shockwave and slows down to subsonic speeds before entering the engine. Now this wing was one of the reasons why this aircraft could double the speed of sound. The delta shape worked well at high speed, hence why so many supersonic jets employ that shape, including the Concorde. But as with the swept wing design, there is the risk of air moving sideways, causing the whole wing to lose lift and stall. This leading edge notch works by creating turbulence, which essentially forms a fence to stop air moving sideways. It's kind of an aerodynamic version of the fence you see in the Avon Sabre. Unfortunately, the delta wing doesn't create as much lift at lower speed, therefore the takeoff and landing speed is a lot higher than other jets, as with the Concorde once again, and this increases the complexity and danger during those two manoeuvres. In fact, the joke was that if there was an engine failure at low speed, it had the gliding characteristics of a well-trimmed brick. But the large physical size of the wing created increased space for fuel tanks and it was simple, solid and cheap to build. They initially looked at using the Rolls-Royce Avon engines, which the Aussies were familiar with from the Sabre, but they decided on the standard French ATAR turbojets which were based on BMW designs. These produced 9,500 pounds of thrust and up to 13,500 with the afterburner. Above the exhaust nozzle was the parachute flaring and underneath was an auxiliary fuel tank, although first generation aircraft had rockets fitted here to help gain altitude quickly to meet high altitude Soviet bombers, although they tended to set the aircraft on fire, which wasn't ideal. The armament includes six dumb bombs or three laser guided bombs. They could also carry two air-to-air -air missiles and there were two 30mm DEFA cannons underneath in here although they had been removed from this aircraft. Now unfortunately I can't go into the cockpit because this actual aircraft crashed and that part of it wasn't restored. The Mirage 30 served with the RAAF until February 1989 where it was replaced by the FA-18 Hornet. 114 were delivered although 40 were lost in accidents. 50 of the remaining jets were sold to the Pakistan Air Force and the rest went to museums and storage. Just to highlight the number of crashes, there's a wreckage of one just outside the museum. This one had an undercarriage failure and the crew safely ejected. Thanks for watching the video and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for many more similar aviation tours, including the Sabre, F-111 and B-52 at the Darwin Aviation Museum. See you another time.